It can be helpful when deciding how to organize and teach an online class or a hybrid class to consider your pedagogical design in terms of units. Now the way this worksheet is constructed is it has um, buttons down the side that look sort of like the course buttons in a learning management system but these could be any kind of division, any kind of areas you want. The main thing we're looking at with this worksheet is the guiding force behind your, your class. The guiding force can be defined um, not as your pedagogy so much, as much as what the foundation of the class actually is. We can't all control how we teach our courses. There are certain standards that certain classes are subject to. Some courses have to go by the textbook because everybody in the department is required to do that. In some cases, courseware is um, required inside a particular program and everybody has to follow the courseware. In all of our cases, we have student learning outcomes to consider and it's possible for those to become the guiding force. For those who have more independence, your course objectives, what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to do, can be the guiding force. And it helps to um, articulate what that is. I'm going to give an example here by using a guiding force of the student learning outcomes. And so I'm going to structure how I think about this based on those student learning outcomes. So I teach history, so the first student learning outcome I'm going to put here is the ability to identify historical eras. And the second one, I want them to be able to analyze sources. And the third one, to create a historical thesis. So this is an example. For each of these, I'm going to want to have different ways of having students engage with the material. So what I would like to do is I would like to somehow start each exploration of these ideas with some form of presentation. Um, maybe a slideshow, maybe a video, maybe some text that I write with some images, something that introduces them to this particular topic that the SLO is based on. I also want them to engage in some form of interaction, um, maybe discussion, or maybe they could create something together, maybe some sort of document uh, where they could uh, practice this. In fact, I'm thinking for this course that I'm designing that practice might be very important, and in fact, I might want to use that here, when I get to them analyzing sources, I might want the interaction to be more something to do with practice. I need some assessment here also, and I'd like it to be for each of the SLOs. That would certainly make things easier for me. Um, maybe a quiz. I could do a quiz. Maybe have them do some kind of post on their blog or in a discussion forum or somewhere else. Something where I can use maybe, um, maybe some peer evaluation, something like that. And so for each of these um, that represent the guiding force being the SLOs, I am considering what aspects of each I want to cover, how I want to have students engage the material. And as I do this, I'm keeping in mind these possible components of my class. And in addition to the name of the class, which we usually can't determine, um, for each of these, I might want to have some sort of visual or audio cue. Uh, maybe as part of the presentation, each uh, would start with some sort of video or slide presentation that looks the same in each of the units to provide some sense of continuity. I could actually use these as course buttons if I wanted to and create a thematic course. Um, most history courses are usually taught by era and oftentimes a course menu would be buttons related to those particular eras in chronological order 
or would relate to um, chapters in a, in a textbook if the textbook were a guiding force. So, but I could do this thematically and actually teach the entire course by using these student learning outcomes as the template. So I have to think about my learning objectives for the whole class or for each particular unit or if I were designing weekly exercises for the week and what learning activities I want them to do. I would need to make some decisions here about what I want for interaction, what I want for presentation, what I want for assessment uh, based on my own pedagogy. And I need to be sure to include due dates for anything that, uh, that they have to achieve. Also, a grading policy and points might be necessary for each of these, or perhaps I could combine some of these assessment and peer evaluations into a formative assessment pattern and have summative assessments take place somewhere else. So these are the kinds of decisions I need to make, but if I start by determining what I want the guiding force to be, it becomes um, a more creative process where I can take a look at multiple ways of designing the class instead of just one.